gonna get some lights wired on, wired in, attached. I'm gonna put the spreaders back on the mast. The mast is painted, looks really, really nice. Came out really good. I mean, it's just a mast, like we just needed to get it painted, get it done, so we did. It really came out beautiful. Today we're gonna put the spreaders back on, put the spreader lights on the spreaders and do the wiring for that. Wires are already run, probably told you all that before. So wires are wires are on, all run up the mast and out the appropriate spots. Got some bushings to put in there to protect the wire from chafing where it exits the holes. And so we're gonna try and get done today. I think we'll get that done. We're also gonna uh, spray some PB blaster, which is like penetrating oil. It's gonna get in and loosen up some screws that stainless steel screws that are through aluminum that hopefully they use dielectric grease for. Hopefully we can get them out because we have a bracket to attach to the top of the mast to put the anemometer on. And that's what we're gonna try and get done today. And we'll, uh, we'll see how it turns out. So for those of you that may have noticed, I'm using a masonry bit to drill this hole through the aluminum mast. Yeah, I went to the hardware store and the only three quarter bit they had was a masonry bit. And uh, I knew it would work, so I figured I had to give it a try, man. Sometimes you, you just gotta do what you gotta do, but ended up working great. The hole was a little bit rough, but uh, it was getting uh, bushing around it anyway, so yeah, it worked out slick. And we did file all the burrs off, too. And whenever using dissimilar metals together, especially for fasteners, uh, you should always use a galvanic isolator like dielectric grease or Tef Gel. Uh, I use a dielectric grease here, but it was a perfect sitch for the Tef Gel. I really wish I'd have used it. It's great stuff. Uh, we even had some on the boat that I found later. Uh, yeah, but oh well. The dielectric grease uh, will work well too, and uh, yeah, you know. Okay, sirrah, sirrah. Don't ring out, Curtis. Very good. They bit beautifully, man. Yeah, believe it or not, we uh, actually bought this boat in uh, Kentucky. It was on the Ohio River in Louisville. The whole boat was full of what we started calling Kentucky mud. It was uh, all the mud from the mud wasps nests that were all over the boat. So every time we'd get into something, we'd have to shake it all out.
Hey, gun. <laughs> yeah. A lot of work. Yeah. To have that, that's a really great finale to pulling out old wiring, running all new wiring. Yep, getting the lights lit up. Pretty, pretty great finale. For me, what I found uh, with the cutting oil is it works really well for drilling through the metal. It doesn't always work so great when I'm tapping. Uh, it gets the tap oily and the shavings stick to the tap and don't clear out through the flutes. Hey, that one looks good. So sometimes it works okay for that, sometimes not so great. For the install here, the light, uh, I think I knew in my heart it was never right. I was hanging over the edge. A halyard was going to swing by and rip it off or something. It was just too vulnerable and it just wasn't going to work. You know, when you're doing something and uh, you, you know, you feel really good about it while it's happening and you think, right, cool, this is going to get done. And even looking at my face there, I knew in my heart I was going to have to redo this. Hey. Get in there. My old favorite spindle sander. So I had to fashion up a block for the mast headlight because uh, it was precariously mounted to the mast where like a halyard was going to swing by and rip it off or something. So uh, I fashioned up a pretty nice block for it. I got to do a little chiseling on the back of it to make some space for the cables to fit up inside of it. The cable for the light and the cable coming up the mast where we'll make that splice and then get some paint on it and all that stuff but uh just right now just getting ready to start 
chisel on out the back and and uh, make the make the cavity for the wire for the wires and the splice. So uh, yeah, let's check it out because um, it's a pretty nice fit. I'm pretty pretty darn stoked on this thing. This is the block. Got has some really beautiful lines on it. I'm really, really super stoked on it. Came out really, really, really nice. White oak, some vertical grain or quarter sawn white oak. Got it from our friend Mac. Mac, you, you might want to pay attention to this question. I need you, at, please, would you pay attention? Oh, um, the track. So, <laughs> there's one. Quite, still have some more that needs to come out of it. 